In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to personalize your account to display the information you want shown each time you add a new pet or view a section in the system. We are also going to show you tips and tricks to make searching through data and entering information into the system much faster. When you first log into your account to begin updating information for your organization, the first section you will want to go to is User Profile and Settings. In this section, you can make sure that the proper information is entered in, including your first and last name, your mailing address, and your phone number. You are also able to specify what information you want on any cage card you need to print, and you're able to see what type of sections you want open when reviewing applications. For more information on how cage card settings and application settings work, please see our Add and Edit Pet Tutorials and Application Processing Tutorials. Once you confirm your settings, you can click Save Changes and the settings will update. For staff members that are going to be adding new pets to the system, the next section you will want to visit are the Pet Default section. In this section, you are able to set up default settings including where to be redirected after adding a new pet to the system or editing a pet. You are also able to set specific characteristics you want preset for cats, dogs, and other pets. Please keep in mind that any s default settings that you set in this section will only appear for your specific staff account and will not be set for other staff accounts in your organization. Each staff member responsible for adding pets will need to set their own pet defaults under user settings. When setting up your pet defaults, please make sure that you are entering in the proper characteristics for each pet type. You can enter the room for cats, dogs, and other pets. To give you an example of how this works, we are going to set all of these to yes. What this means is any time I add a cat to the system, all of these settings will automatically be set to yes for that cat. Once you have all of these settings set to your preferences, please scroll down to the bottom and click Update Defaults. Now that these characteristics are set, I am going to go add a pet to the system to show you what it looks like. To add a pet, you will go to Manage Pet Data, select Add New Cat at the top, and enter in the cat's initial information. Once the information is entered, you can scroll down to the bottom and hit Next, and the cat will be added to the system. If you scroll down, you will notice that under Characteristics, you will see that all of these options are automatically set to Yes, which are matching the options that I set in my Pet Default section. Now that we've walked you through how to set up your pet defaults and your user settings, we are now going to show you tips and tricks for saving time when entering data and filtering through information in your established account. One of the best ways to save time using the established software is to make sure that your filters are set to the proper settings so that the information you want to view is the correct information you're looking to update. There are two ways to set your filters in every section. For example, when you're in the Manage Pet Data section, you will see that we have two different filter buttons. We have the Show Filter buttons, which are just quick filters that you can set for your current session, or you have your default filters, which are filters that you would like to set every single time you enter the Manage Pet Data section. To set your quick filters, you can select the statuses of the pet you want to see, the breed, the age, the pet type, or the size, gender, and specific pet names that you would like to see. If you ever want to save these filters as the default filters, you can click the Save as Default button after setting the proper filters above. If you would like to save the filters for this current session, you would select the filters and then you would click Hide Filters so that way it is not blocking the data below. Just to show you what default filters look like, right now the only filter selected is to show pets with the status available. If I want to change this and show pets both of status fostered and available, I would click on Manage Default Filters, select Fostered, and click on it to add to the list. Please keep in mind you can always remove statuses from this list as well if you don't want them showing up. For purposes of this demo, we are going to set it so that way we see available and fostered pets every time we go to the Manage Pet Data section, and we are going to click Save Filters. As you can see, once you do this, the fostered pets will begin to show up as well as the available pets in your list. Just to show you the difference between the regular filters and the default filters, as you can see, now that I have this set to show fostered and available pets in my default filters, anytime I leave this page and then go back, 
because I have available and fostered set as my default filters, it will always show the available and the fostered pets. If I were to now use my quick filters to make quick edits to my filter list, and let's say I added adopted pets, the adopted pets would show, but if I were to leave and come back again, it would just be reset to whatever I have set in the default filters. Another thing to note is that in every section we have a customize your view column. Clicking on that button will allow you to show or hide specific columns with specific pet data that you would like to see. We are one of the few softwares that lets you customize your view in every single index of the website. To show a column, you will move it from the hide to the show column over here. For example, if you want to see an animal's name and ID, you can drag the name and ID column all the way to the top of show and it will appear on the left hand most side of your screen. Once you set the columns that you would like to show, scroll down to the bottom and hit save. As you can see, the name and ID column is now showing up and you can now see the name and ID for every pet next to each other. We also have the name and ID column as separate columns as well if you prefer to see those separate. In addition to being able to change the columns that you see in each section of your account, you are also able to change the view of each section in your account as well. To do this, you can click any of the three different view options next to change view in the top right hand section of each section. For those using computers, we recommend using the table view, which is the farthest view to the right. If you are using a smartphone or a tablet, we recommend using either one of the other two views shown here. Last but not least, one of the most useful features to help save you time with reporting is the quick reports. Anytime you filter data, you are able to actually export that filtered data to an Excel sheet. So let's say you want to filter a list of all your available pets. To do this, you can either use the quick filters or default filters. In this example, we are going to use the quick filters. To only view your available pets, you can click on show filters, remove the fostered pets from the list, and then hide the filters so that way the data is showing. To export this data to an Excel sheet, you can click Actions at the top and then Export Filtered Data. This will generate a report that you can now download that shows all your available pets. Please keep in mind that all of these options are available in every single section of the account. This includes medical records and reminders along with all your application data. This also applies to your contact section as well if you are looking to filter, for example, for all your donors. Another very important tool to help you save time is the search bar at the top of every section. By typing in a pet's name, ID, or microchip number, you are able to instantly bring up the pet you are looking for. For example, if you want to find the pet named Aaron, you would type in Aaron, and it would instantly bring up the pet. Keep in mind you are able to enter in a pet name, an adopter name, any ID number, including the microchip number. This search bar is also at the top of every section on our website. Last but not least is the sort by column. In every section, you are able to sort by a specific set of criteria depending on what you want to look for. If you want to sort all of your pets alphabetically, you can select that you want to sort by the pet name. Once you do that, you will see that every single pet will be sorted in alphabetical order. You are also able to sort by breed, status, and virtually any other statistic we track for your pets. If you would like each section to be sorted by a specific feature every time you enter that section, you are able to set this in the default filters area. Another thing you will notice is little help icons throughout the site. These little help icons are purple circles and are located next to the items that they are explaining. To disable those icons, you can click disable help in the top purple bar of your screen. If you want to re-enable them, you can just click the Enable Help and they will reappear. One other very important tool to help you save time when updating data is the Bulk Update. In every section, you have the option to bulk update any of the data showing in the section. For example, in the Pets section, if you check off multiple pets, you will notice that at the top of the screen, the Bulk Actions button appears. If you select Bulk Actions, you will notice that you are able to assign an adopter, assign a foster, change the pet statuses, 
edit many pets at once, edit a field for many pets at once, or download cage cards for all the pets you selected. In this example, we are just going to edit many pets. As you can see, I already selected the pets I would like to edit, and now I'm going to select Edit Many Pets from the Bulk Actions dropdown. Once you click on that field, you will see that there will be a blank page of all the fields that you could edit for any pet. Please keep in mind that if you leave a field blank, none of those fields will be updated for any of those pets. However, if you enter an information, that information will be updated for that specific field for all the pets you selected. If I enter a new description for the description and hit save, that description will now be the new description for all of the pets I selected. Just to show you an example, if I go into edit this pet, you will see that the description has been updated to new descriptions for this pet. This concludes the tutorial for saving time when searching for data or updating data within the Petstablish system.